most of the time for it's live by the way um but it's gonna have to run the ads and stuff in the beginning um most of the time at least for mine it kind of depends on the book but a lot of times people just like to sit and watch and not really talk too much so yeah. I think I'm just like watching other people talk but yeah I came up with a couple a couple things but I think it'll be fine just to me. talk about um oh let me put on banner okay we'll start with like a spoiler free section and then get into spoilers later nice Okay, if you are here, if you can see us yet, go ahead and say hi. I don't know if how long the ads usually take. I think I put ads before. <laughs> I can't remember. If you didn't, then we're just waiting. <laughs> okay, yeah, I'm just sitting here. Oh, okay, here we go. Some people are coming in. Hi, oops. I'm not used to doing this on my computer. I'm used to doing it on my phone. So I'm like, wow, I have this whole screen in front of me. <laughs> we go hi becky hi katrina hi yeah i know hi hi jason okay so we got some people coming in um welcome everybody to the live discussion of we spread by ian reed um i'm joined by which which side uh sarah <laughs> from sarah's shelves if you want to go ahead and introduce yourself, talk a little bit about what you like to read, your channel, whatever you want. Hello, I'm Sarah from Sarah's Shelves. I hate talking about myself. Um, <laughs> I read a little bit of everything. I go through different eras with my reading. I'll be obsessed with one genre and then kind of read it out. And then I'm like, I'm sick of that. So then I move on to something else. But right now I'm in the mood for like literary fiction type books but like dark ones and I mm. feel as though this kind of hit both of those things for sure so yeah and then my channel I do readings friends every Sunday but other than that videos are very sporadic <laughs> hi there um so before we start and get into the book and everything um I feel like I know the answer to this, but some people on the chat or people watching the playback might not know. Um, have you read anything from Ian Reid before? What is your experience? If you have, do you like him? Is this your first? So I'm thinking of Ending Things as one of my favorite books of all time. Oh, wow. So I, I've read that book twice. I physically read it the first time and then I was like, wait a second, I got to go back and so I listened to it the second time and the audiobook is so good for that book it's stunning but I was like okay I'm not gonna read faux just yet I'm just gonna jump into we spread and I was like am I gonna be let down what's gonna happen but I guess we'll find out <laughs> so I don't want to like give it away but yeah do you do you feel like you had like a a certain I don't know were you scared that you had this like on too high of an expectation or anything before you went in? Yeah, I I've, <laughs> um, I've read both. I'm thinking of ending things and foe. Um, mm -hmm. I'm thinking of ending things was one of my favorites of last year. I read it last year. Um, so going into this, I didn't really know. Um, Cause I did like faux, but not as much as I'm thinking of ending things. So this one, I felt like my expectations were high. Um, and I was hoping that I would absolutely love it, but I did kind of try <laughs> and check myself a little bit yeah. just so that I didn't, cause I feel like my expectations when I read faux was so, so high. And I don't know if that, ex that affected my experience. So I tried mm -hmm. to lower it for for this one yeah did you physically read faux or did you listen to the audio i only physically read i'm thinking of ending things i read that last year when i was not reading audiobooks i just started listening to audiobooks this year for faux i read physically and listened to the audiobook and i mm -hmm. don't know if that 
helped or hindered my experience. I can't say why, cause I don't want to spoil anything, but, um, yeah, I'm not sure, but I did do the same thing with this one. I listened to the audio and read physically. Did you do the same? Um, I just physically read this one, but about mm -hmm. faux, I was looking into whether or not I should just read faux in between and then read We Spread. Cause I'm, I like to read author's books in order for whatever reason. I don't know. Mm -hmm. I just like to, that's part of my process, but a lot of people were mm -hmm. saying they were let down by faux compared to I'm thinking of ending things. So I was like, oh, I'll just go straight to We Spread and then come back to faux later. But I heard, I don't know if this is like the spoiler you were talking about, but like I heard it's much better to read faux physically for a specific reason. I would agree. I don't know what other people's reasoning for, but there is a specific reason that I would avoid the audio and it's not a bad thing. But I feel like for me, the audiobook for that one, it very quickly gave away what, what isn't said until the end. It gave away something important. And I think it would have made my experience better had, I don't know, I, I don't want to say, I don't want to say <laughs> what it is. It's hard to explain. But I think if you, when you do go to read it, if you listen to the audiobooks, it's on Scribd. If you at least try the beginning, I mean, maybe, or maybe listen to it the after you read it physically and see if you can kind of guess what that thing is. Have you heard anybody say why they didn't like the audiobook? I mean, I just heard that, you know, a lot of people were let down. So I'm like, okay, is it because you listen to the audio? And then people who physically read it are like, it was very effective because of the certain decisions that were made like in the mm -hmm. actual physical book. So I'm wondering mm -hmm. if it's like the difference between ratings is the difference between people who listen to the audiobook only and then people who physically read it. Quite possibly. I mean, I feel like in doing it both ways, um, I feel like if I would have read it physically, I wouldn't have understood something about the story that's, explained later in, and I can't say why, but if I would have read it or if I would have listened to the audio, I would have missed out also on things physically that, mm -hmm. you know, you can't get from not seeing how the story is written. So pairing the two together, I feel like you're getting more information than you need. And it's kind of giving away things because right away, just from the physical book, it's written in a way that if you notice what how it's written in a certain way. <laughs> I mean, I don't think it's a spoiler to say because every every forum well, that I looked at said like you should read it physically for this reason. And I don't feel yeah. like it's a spoiler unless you say like what the ending is that makes Well yeah. But I feel like if I say like exactly what it is that that he does in the physical book, then it's going to kind of give things away. And same thing with the narrator. I feel like if I explain why for the audio, because the audio wasn't bad. It's not mm -hmm. that it was bad or I didn't like the way it was read or, you know, there was something wrong with it, but there's, it's, there's a certain thing about it that I was like, I think it's this. And then when I got to the end and it was that I was like, man, you know? Okay. Yeah. That makes sense. Did you see that's I mean, getting an adaptation that's going to star Saoirse Ronan? I did. I, I'm interested to see how it goes. I mean, I didn't I didn't dislike the book in doing it both ways. I just feel like I got spoiled for something and it wouldn't have been better. But I'm interested to see how they, how they turn it into a movie. I, th I think it'll make a good movie. I mean, it's very... It's very character focused, but I think most of his stories are, but... Yeah, definitely. I'd be, I'd be excited to watch it. Um, I have not read any Ian Reid before, but I found out he lives in my city. Oh, that's cool. Ooh. I'd be looking around. <laughs> <You're> like, Excuse <laughs> me, sir, I love your book. <laughs> like, Ian, let's go out to coffee, please. <laughs> right? Can we talk about things? <laughs> um, love the audiobook of I'm Thinking of Ending Things. I think when I do a reread, because I haven't reread that yet, um, I'll listen to the audiobook. That one section... 
I know you know what I'm talking about. That one section towards the end on mm-hmm. audio. I thought I was losing my mind. Really? <laughs> I'm so excited to listen to it. Um, I try hard not to have expectations for our anything especially in books I do too uh it's kind of hard sometimes though when you've read things and you've really enjoyed like the author's previous stuff especially if you consider something a favorite to like not have any expectations picking up their next book like yeah hi Lexi hi this is my second from this author I've also read I'm thinking of ending things I think she liked that one too right yeah yes uh, this is my first experience of Ian Reed. I really need to read. I'm thinking of ending things, but I have a seemingly never ending TBR. Yes. <laughs> I feel you on that. Um, yeah, definitely highly recommend. I'm thinking of ending things, especially if you enjoyed this. I mean, I think this is very different, but the writing style, like the literary horror type of writing style is still similar enough. I agree. Um, hello. Hi, Carol. I'm thinking of ending things is my favorite from him that I've read. I've read Foe as well as we spread. Hi, Kelly. I enjoyed this, but not as much as I'm thinking of ending things. Interesting. Everyone seems to have the same. (laughs) Yeah, I, I did watch Gabby's vlog this morning um, Mm -hmm. after I was kind of putting everything together and she seems to like this one more than that one. But Mm -hmm. so far it seems like everyone still prefers, still prefers the first. Exactly. Um, Hi, Stephanie. Uh, Hello. Haven't read Faux yet, but I loved We Spread and I'm thinking of ending things. I never heard much about Faux. I don't know if that was one that kind of, went under the radar or I or... think maybe yeah I didn't even know about it either until I saw it in a used bookstore and it said Ian Reed and I was like wait is this the same author as that <laughs> book I really loved and it was but I felt like it looked as though that one was his debut and then I'm thinking of ending things was like his sophomore novel but it's just yeah. interesting to me that Faux was published after I'm thinking of anything even without reading Faux yeah yeah um, I did not like the movie they did of I'm thinking of anything. So I haven't watched it. I'm scared. I, I hear it's terrible and I don't want that my experience ruined. <laughs> it's actually so terrible. Like do not even try it. It's over it- two hours long, I think. And it's just, it doesn't follow the book at all. Oh, really? So they yeah. completely changed things? They completely changed a lot of things and oh, wow. the end like okay. it's What's just that? not good. I don't know why movies do that like don't ruin a good thing like if the book does well and you're gonna adapt it like keep it the same I don't want a new story um yep. I hated the movie hopefully Fo will be better <laughs> hopefully <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Um, if you like the musical Oklahoma, you'll love the movie. <laughs> what? <laughs> There's a lot of like dance numbers in it, and like it's so weird. I just I was like, what are we doing with this? This is not the this is oh, not the source no. material. I'm kind of curious and want to watch it now. <laughs> I'm like, what do you mean Oklahoma? Oh no, that's crazy. <laughs> okay. Um Okay, so let's go ahead and get into the book. Um, This is going to be a spoiler-free section, so as long as the banner is up, please keep your uh, comments (laughs) and stuff like that Um, (laughs) spoiler-free. Yeah, that's crazy. Exactly, exactly. Um, So let's go ahead and get into ratings, um, just so I can gauge how everyone in the chat and everything was feeling about the book. Um, So if you want to go ahead and put what you thought of it. If you rate, go ahead and put your star number. If you DNF'd or haven't read it yet or whatever, go ahead and put that in the chat. Sarah, if you want to say your rating first. (laughs) I rated this book five stars. 
Me too. <laughs> oh, good. I, I loved it. Um, I'm just, and I'm so relieved. <laughs> I'm really, I was really, really, I was going to love it. I'm so relieved. Um, I, I feel like after I finished it, I didn't know if I wanted to give it like a 4.5 or a 5. Mm -hmm. um, but the more I sit with it, the more I think about it, the more I love it. Um, so yeah, it's definitely, it's definitely getting a five for me. I just love mm -hmm. his style of writing and I love, I love books with like strong main characters, like where you're really in the mind. And he does such a good job in my opinion of really putting you in the character's shoes and like seeing the world through mm -hmm. their, through their lens. I just, I really loved it. Yeah. I didn't even think about my rating the whole time reading it. I was just experiencing yeah, it. And then I finished it. I didn't immediately rate it, which is something I normally do. After I finish a book, I'm like, okay, it's a four star or like whatever. And mm -hmm. after I finished it, I just had to sit back and really think about it. And I didn't rate it until like the day after. Yeah. I I finished this yesterday. And yeah, I didn't decide on a rating until today. But I feel like I, too, try and not, like, stop a lot through the book and, like, be like, well, I'm at the midway point and it's feeling like this. I try and read his books really fast because, at least in previous experience, I tend to, they tend to make me want to think a lot. And mm -hmm. that's a great thing. But I feel like if I think too much while I'm reading it, then I'll start thinking about too much you know thinking into things too much and right. I'll lose some of that you know just letting it unfold as it mm -hmm. is and not overthinking about things so yeah I try and just that's why I didn't annotate why I was reading it this first time through because I just wanted to read it experience it and then sit with it and think about it and and all of that yeah and like if you theorize what's gonna happen and you're yeah. expecting that or maybe you're like, OK, if this is what I'm expecting it to go like and then it doesn't, it's either a hit or a miss. Yeah, that's true. Uh, so we got four stars, we got five stars, yay, Woo. five stars. Oh, I love to see it. I'm so yeah. happy. Three stars. I think I should have read it physically instead of listening. I think that hurt my enjoyment. Possibly. Uh, three stars, and I agree with Carol. I listened to it, too. Maybe I'll read it next time. Hmm. Um, yeah. Like I said, I did it both ways. I don't know. I don't know if that would have hindered my experience any if I would have just listened to it. Mm -hmm. um, I don't know. I don't think I don't think it would have but I mean I don't know what the narrator sounds like but I know that looking at the book and just I feel like the formatting of the writing also added to the experience at least for me mm -hmm. so maybe that made it better I don't know yeah maybe um, I absolutely loved it. Five stars. I found myself continuing to think about the book after reading it for sure. I'm still, I'm still thinking about it. Yeah. The, for just people who listen to it on audio, if you haven't seen like the actual physical, the way that it's formatted in the book and kind of like a reason why it reads so fast is it's very spacious throughout the reading. It's mostly, you know, dialogue and thoughts. So a lot of it, um, I think, physically it does kind of add something to it because it feels I don't know it feels very I don't know how to explain it it feels but very feels dreamy like, to me yeah, yeah yeah um but yeah so that's what it looks like on the inside um I think listening to it maybe you would lose that that sense of like I don't know I don't know what yeah, I'm saying. I, I often will feel stressed about like oh how many pages do I have left of this book but this mm -hmm. one it's like because there were so many pages that just had maybe like one paragraph or mm -hmm. it was just so split up, I didn't feel bogged down by staring at the page with For just sure. a ton of words on it. I could just yeah. flow through it easily. 
Yeah, there's like pages where it's just like a couple lines, yeah. one line, one paragraph. Um, I, I do think that adds to it because you can really see like how choppy her mind is or how fast things flip. Um, yeah. Um, okay, so it looks like, oh, hold on, let me do this. Where was I at? I think Carol's comment about. Oh yeah, here we go. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. I I was I was surprised by that too because if you look at the audiobook, like it's only five hours or whatever, but the page count is close to three hundred. Mm -hmm. So I figured there had to be you know some kind of <laughs> something going on there. Yeah, because there's nothing worse than you know sitting down and cracking open a book and then there's like the smallest font ever and you're yeah. just like what I'm getting a headache just looking at these pages but like I said this one you just easily you don't even have to know which line you're on necessarily like sometimes I'll accidentally read the same sentence mm -hmm. in books over again because I don't skip to the next line but this one that didn't happen at all because there's just so many like breaks yeah it was, it was really easy to get through, really easy to follow. Okay, um, so I guess we'll get into like what we thought of our main character, Penny. Um, or no, before we get into that, let's do a synopsis. Do you want to do a synopsis? Or would you like me to? doesn't matter. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> can you do it? Yeah, for sure. Um, so in We Spread, uh, this is just for like, obviously everybody here has read it, but just for people watching the playback. Um, so we spread, we're following our main character, Penny. She is an older woman. It doesn't say right away how old she is, so I'm not going to say it in the synopsis. Um, but she's an older woman. She has an accident at home. She's living by herself, and um, her partner is deceased. She has an accident at home. Her landlord finds her, and um, he's not really her caregiver, but he, he does help her out. And she ends up getting put into like this live-in care facility. Um, it's very small. And um, we're just following throughout the book, her being in this situation, her being taken out of the situation where she was alone a lot and, um, you know, on her own. And now all of a sudden she's being cared for by other people and she doesn't really have a lot of privacy and, um, and she also is having like these memory lapses and losing time. And um, she's just feeling very, she feels comfortable there, but then she's also very suspicious about certain things that are going on and the other people there and why she's there. And um, she's just very confused and suspicious about all of the stuff that's happening. Um, so yeah, that's basically the book. Um, so Penny, our main character, did you enjoy the, this is a very like character focused book. Mm -hmm. Um, again, it's very character driven, not a whole lot of plot other than the fact that she's put into this facility and her mental state is questionable. Um, did you enjoy being in her mind? Uh, the book is told all through her perspective. So did you enjoy that kind of, yeah, being in her mind? Yes, because you felt like you were experiencing the same thing she was and you just didn't know if you could trust it or not. Sure. Like time yeah, I, and stuff like that. Yeah, um, I liked that, that she felt like she was definitely an unreliable narrator in that way, but I liked that it wasn't in a sense that like she was purposefully lying or right. that she was trying to be deceptive. She like honestly didn't remember things. And I also liked that we didn't know how, like how severe it was. Like she says in the beginning of the book, like, she clearly says like, I I'm having trouble like remembering certain things and stuff, but it's not like she never says she's diagnosed with anything. Mm -hmm. um, there's never, 
there's never anything clear in the beginning that she's really struggling mentally, um, which I liked because it gave that sense throughout the book of like how, how unreliable is her perspective? Is there something really going on or is her mind just really going? Um, I liked that a lot. And I really liked being her mind. I mean, I didn't, I feel like it took me a little while to acclimate to that um, and to kind of like her, I guess. Not that I ever disliked her, but um, it did take me a minute to feel a little bit more comfortable in her perspective. And definitely throughout the book, I found myself forgetting kind of that I was seeing things through her perspective. Like I would find myself being really suspicious too of like the other characters and then like today when I was going through and annotating stuff I'm like that doesn't seem as suspicious but <laughs> what I already know I know it plays out yeah so I feel like it, his writing definitely did a good job of putting me in her mind and like making me question all these people around her like why are they doing this why are yeah. they cutting my hair like this why are they doing these different things Yeah, it was very effective, and I don't even know, like, if it had been told in multiple POVs, or, like, if it had been told from, like, an outsider kind of perspective, if I would have liked it as much. Yeah, I I definitely don't think I would have. I liked that we were in her mind, and I could see why people wouldn't, um, because it was kind of a confusing place to be, (coughs) but... I liked it, but I like that kind of, I like stories that are told from like first person perspective where Mm -hmm. you're in their mind and seeing things through their eyes. Um, But I know with like confusing stories such as this, where it could go multiple different ways, there could be multiple meanings for things that it could be like not people's favorite. (laughs) Jerks. (laughs) Didn't they know? Um, I felt the formatting of the book was maybe an attempt to represent how Penny felt the way she and the way she experiences the world. Yeah, same. I mean, I had kind of a theory about this. I mean, I won't get into any spoilers, obviously, but being as vague as possible, I feel like it kind of led itself to the whole getting older type of thing. You know, I don't even know how to say this, but you know how um they make phones for like elderly people that have huge buttons because they can't press them so I was like was this written so it could be easily accessible for everyone and like for that's interesting also that's interesting I didn't even think about it that way (laughs) but I guess it could be that would definitely be um like not as daunting to read it and like it not be like you know pages and pages of like dense text Mm -hmm. um but yeah I definitely feel like the the writing like the choppiness of it and like how things are spaced out and that definitely uh leans into her as a as a character I loved Penny I loved her too Mm -hmm. um this definitely gave me death in her hands vibes. It did. Um, have you read death in her hands? No, it's, I currently have the audiobook checked out, but I haven't read it yet. Well, the main, the main character in that one is also an older woman. Um, I think she's younger than this one, but she still is experiencing those kind of same mental things. And she's kind of an unreliable narrator in the same sense of this one. Um, that she's, you know, she's older and her mind's kind of failing and she fixates on certain things and gets stressed out about odd things and that kind of thing. I think you'd probably like it if you like this one. I've just read it. The only Otessa Moshvig book I've read is My Year of Rest and Relaxation, and I did not like it. I <laughs> liked the first half. I was living for it. And then it was just very boring in the second half, so I gave it two stars. But... <laughs> I'm still interested in this one. And then Eileen, I just recently got a physical copy of. So yeah, I haven't read that one yet. I'm reading it this month. Um, I would say, I mean, I haven't read Death in Her Hands for a couple years. 
Um, sorry, we're on like a, a totally different thing now, guys. Um, but I do feel like that one's, I mean, you could still tell it's an Otessa Mosh bag. I, I've read a few things from her and I feel like her writing is kind of, I mean, they're different stories, but you can still feel like it's the same author. Um, but you might still like it. You might still like it because of the character, the character similarities. Um, loved Penny. It felt like I was right there with her. Mm -hmm. I loved the, um, the discussion within it about aging and um, there was a lot of talk about um, like people wanting more time and um, if that's a good thing or if that means anything, if that, if that um, about getting older and aging and the fears around that and loss of time and regrets and all of that. I, I really like that discussion as someone who's feels like they're getting old. I, I definitely, <laughs> I definitely felt for, um, those are definitely fears of mine. I don't think I have a fear of aging, um, you know, at the point of my life now, but I definitely have a fear of being like at her age and experiencing mm -hmm. those like loss of memory things and, um, feeling alone and, that kind of stuff. I think everybody does though. Yeah. I mean, I don't necessarily fear aging either. It's more like I'm, I fear like regretting things that I didn't do in my mm -hmm. life. Yeah. I think a lot of people feel that way. I don't, I liked, <laughs> I liked one of the passages though in the book. I'm going to see if I can find it real quick. I highlighted it um, because I felt like this, I felt like this was me. I feel like a lot of people, feel like they don't they feel like they're gonna have regrets about like missing out on things um but this character didn't seem to have that thing she says the world fills me with anxiety I don't want to be on an adventure not at all I want to be at home I want to be having a nap <laughs> and I was just like that's me like I don't I don't care about doing all the things <laughs> Um, Penny was a great character. I liked that we are seeing things through eyes, through her eyes throughout the book. I really enjoyed that too. I felt like it would have read super differently if it was from an outside perspective. Yeah. Um, I felt as though I knew what it was like to be in Penny's shoes. It is very easy to empathize with her. Yeah. I think it made it I think that was intentional of the author probably though, to make it a little bit more confusing being in her mind. Um, Cause at least for me, like I, I would kind of forget that at certain points that she was unreliable. So when she was like suspicious about certain characters, certain characters, I'd be like, Oh yeah, like something, something odd is happening in this place. Um, and then something else would happen. And I would be like, Oh wait, like she's losing time and she's like obviously having like some mental things. So was that thing that she experienced, like, was it really, was it really that or something mm -hmm. else? Yeah. And I had to go back and look and see what the genres listed were again, because I was like, am I just reading into things or is this how it's supposed to go? But yeah, it's horror fiction. Like yeah. that's the first tag for genres so I'm like okay we're on track would you did you feel like this was like a horror novel would you categorize this as horror because I feel like I feel like this is kind of hazy on like what I would categorize it I would say I would categorize it as horror but I would say it's more like literary horror or like if you just like outright say this is a horror novel I think it would probably give people wrong expectations on what to expect because there's not really any gore that it's not like there's, I mean, there is talk of death within it, but it's not like people are dying left and right. And it's not like that kind of horror. It's more like the psychological mm -hmm. sort of thing. Um, but then I saw in here, like some of the blurbs and stuff, they called it a thriller and I don't, I wouldn't categorize it as a thriller. I feel like that would give the wrong expectations too. Yeah. I mean, most people, when they think of horror books, they think of stuff that's going to scare them or, like, 
a haunted mm -hmm. house or a slasher right. or something, but just <laughs> say something is horrific. Like, I do think that this book is horror because yeah, it is horrific. Yeah. But at the same time, I say it leans more into like philosophical horror. Yeah. It's, it's definitely a more like thought provoking sort of horror or like that sense of uncertainty and that sense of like darker, I don't know, darker topics or things that you might fear yourself. Or, I mean, there's still like, there was still plenty in it where I found it like suspenseful a little bit, or um, there was like a sense of something quite possibly could happen next that was, you know, crazy or unsettling. Um, but it, it didn't feel like a typical horror for me. Yeah, I was waiting for it to get scary because I was like, mm -hmm. okay, I re I, it says horror, like, where are we headed? And not to say like, it doesn't get scared, but not in the way that you would expect. Yeah. You know? Yeah. When I was reading throughout, like I had to keep trying to stop myself from doing this, but like, I would look at the cover and I'd be like, we spread. What does that mean? Like, what are all of these? What is this? Is this veins? Is it roots? What does that mean? And then like, someone would say something throughout the book, like how Shelly, the person who runs the place, how she is like into biology and she's a scientist. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, hmm, what does that mean? That that must mean something. <laughs> and then like, just like certain things that she would do, I'd be like, that's suspicious. Like something, yeah. something crazy is going on in this place. Like she's trying to like suck their life force out or <laughs> something. And then I was like, okay, you calm down. <laughs> and because the main character, like, she clearly is having, like, memory lapses and stuff like that. But then, like, why is she having the memory lapses? Is it because of old age? Or is it because they're, like, doing strange things or whatever? Oops. I felt like the gaps on the pages represents the gaps in her memory. Oh, that's good. I think yeah. that would be too um <laughs> love that passage i just want to be <laughs> safe like i don't i don't need adventure in my life i just want i just want to be home i want to take a nap i want safety a nap that would be amazing <laughs> um i agree with classifying the book as horror it has a mysterious creeping sense of unease which makes the story get under your skin for sure do you feel like um the the setting of the book do you feel like that added to the sense of unease or anything her being out in the middle of this woods um away from other people and the community being so small I feel like usually we're talking about like elderly facilities or old folks homes like there's tons of workers and there's tons of people and they're packed to capacity and here we have her she's one of four people there um out of the the patients and there's two workers in the book obviously there's probably more like chefs and stuff like that but we get like six characters at, mm -hmm. in, in this book do you feel like that added to the sense of is this place real like or suspicious or you know what's going on here yeah it definitely gave me like iffy cautious vibes because you know, you have this, like you were saying, these facilities are huge nowadays. Like they house hundreds of elderly mm -hmm. people. And for them to only have four, I was like, wait a second. And then also it's kind of in this secluded area, which is, I mean, secluded horror is its own genre. Right. Crazy so, place surrounded by spooky woods. Like what? Exactly, <laughs> like all of the trees. And then, I mean, at the very beginning of the book, when she was saying she didn't even remember, like, agreeing to come here. So I was like... <laughs> yeah, they're just like, oh, yeah, remember you talked about it with your partner and you, you came here before and you loved it. And she's like, I've never been here before in my life. Yeah, I was like, I don't know. Seems iffy to me. Yeah, and then when she gets there, that one lady, she's like, oh, we've been waiting for you. And she's like 
there's hardly any people here. You guys have been holding my spot for like an unknown period of time, just waiting for me. Like that's weird. Yeah. Um, and her losing her memory, et cetera, gives me a feeling of lack of control and predictability, which can be unnerving, scary for me. For sure. Like, I feel like that's the scariest thing, at least for me, about like getting, like reading, a, reaching a certain age. Um, like you just, there, you can't help it. There's nothing you can do. You just, your mind starts going and you forget things. And that's, it's so scary. I don't, I, I don't think I have anybody in my family who has like Alzheimer's or dementia or anything like that. Um, but I did watch my friend, her dad had that and it was really, really hard for her to, um, you know, go to see her dad at the hospital or wherever and him be like, you know, who are you? Like, that's just devastating. I can't, I can't imagine. Yeah. Um, I think when there are giant bags of fingernails involved, it's horror. I thought that was, uh, I thought that was suspicious too. Like when she's in there getting her like spa day and talking with Shelly, I started tabbing so much in that, um, because I'm like this whole scene, if you forget that, you know, maybe she's not, you know, getting things right or that you're in her mind it seems suspicious because she's like doing things with, she's collecting everything in bags and she's like collecting her blood and saying how healthy it looks. Yeah. And like, they're talking about um, longevity and um, like, she's talking about how she's um, into organic chemistry and biology and how um, all the like symbiotic fusion and all this stuff. I'm like oh this has got to mean something she's she's doing something crazy but um I guess the location could be seen as a new spin on the old house in the woods idea for sure definitely mm -hmm. a, a typical kind of horror element but one that I love I love anything tell me it has like a secluded place in the woods and I am I want to read it mm-hmm um, I love the setting. It added to the isolated feeling. Also loved how one second you would feel like she was comforted and taken care of. And then she was suspicious and would lose time for sure. Um, that constant back and forth really um, kept me guessing the whole time. I just couldn't. I, I really didn't know until the very end and like thinking about it later, kind of where I, I stand on everything on what I think, you know, actually happened. But I was definitely going back and forth through the whole thing. Okay, so um, I think we can get into spoilers unless there's anything else you want to talk about spoiler free. Nope. Okay. So I'm going to put. And I was like, uh, okay, Katrina come in here with kind of a minor spoiler. <laughs> I was like, are we talking spoilers now? What's happening? Um. <clears throat> Okay, so if anyone here is watching and has not um, read the book, now would be your time to leave because we will be talking spoilers. Um, so one, I just wanted to ask the uh, on on story graph on um, Instagram. You posted a story of you crying. Was that for this book or something else? It was this book. <laughs> I didn't. I mean, oh my god crying. I literally could not stop crying at like the very last like 10 pages I just could not stop crying yeah I, I didn't cry I did read it when I was sprinting and I had my camera on so I was kind of aware that I was you know potentially being watched mm -hmm. but um I did I did well up but I didn't I didn't quite cry but it was definitely that ending was definitely emotional um, also, before we get into it, just for the people in the chat who didn't absolutely love, love this book, like the people who gave it three stars, if you want to just say, like, what do you think would have added to your enjoyment? Why do you think it didn't quite work for you? Um, what would you have liked 
the book to do differently in order for you to give it a higher rating. I'm just curious. <clears throat> yeah, it was, it was so, so surprising at the end. Had you been, had you watched like Gabby's vlog or had you kind of been spoiled for anything prior to reading the book? Like, were you anticipating crying at the end or... I I was anticipating crying because I did watch her vlog up until like when she was talking about spoilers and I watched that like earlier today but I was like why is everyone crying it's a horror book like what's happening and I was expecting it the entire time and I was like no tears like we're in the final stretch why like I don't understand I because I'm a crier in books I cry at literally anything and everything so I was like, when is it going to happen? If it's going to happen. And then it hit me and I was like, yeah, exactly. <laughs> I feel like I'm, I would, con I don't know if I would consider myself a crier. I feel like I cry fairly easily in books. Um, but I don't know, maybe not. I can't list a whole lot of books that I've cried for, but I can. <laughs> Okay, then maybe I'm not a crier, but I feel like this still totally emotionally hit me and um, I could totally understand why it would leave people feeling really, really raw after. Um, the ending was definitely a surprise. Uh, did you, did you expect, I don't know, <laughs> did you expect it to end like that? I don't know, like when, I, I, I didn't, I had I knew that people had cried at some point during it, but, um, but I didn't know, obviously I didn't know why. Um, I don't know that I was expecting her to die at the end. I, I was thinking maybe, um, but definitely not that way. I definitely didn't expect her to be jumping off a cliff. Um, I don't know. Were you surprised by the ending? It felt like really abrupt too. Maybe if I would have had a little bit more time, like to see what was leading up to that, um, I would have cried, but I was so stunned in the moment. I was just like, what just happened? Well, like in the beginning, there was something about like her just wanting to float. And yeah. then at the end she did float. Yeah. So I'm like, okay, so that's tying it back to, her jumping off the cliff like she wanted to float and she yeah. just didn't understand what was going on because the whole time like you don't know what is actually happening because she's been there for three years at least and you're like but she just got there and she thinks she just got there so the whole time like even in the end you can't even trust her there's also like a theory that she was dead the whole time yeah. And I don't know how I feel about like all the different theories and yeah. I can't wait to read more people's input like after mm -hmm. more people have read it because there's definitely even for I'm thinking of ending things like there are forums about like the ins and outs of that book and how it could go a certain way or another way. Yeah. And I feel like that's going to happen with this book too. Yeah. In the comments, if you want to put what you think happened, um, what your, your theory is, mine is just that her mind was going and she was not seeing things clearly. And, um, you know, she was in her nineties, it says at the end, I feel like if that would have been said at the beginning of the book that she was in her nineties, um, I would have probably thought more throughout the book that it was just her memory going but at the beginning like I didn't know how old she was just her going into a facility she could have been in her 70s and people in their yeah. 70s you know they might just be starting to lose their memory or starting to experience things I didn't know you know how far into it but in her 90s I mean that's people don't <laughs> don't often like really get into those older years yeah. um so I could definitely see how at that age where she could really be experiencing these big like mental, mental breaks. Um, so that's, that's just what I think. Um, as far as like what actually happened at the end, I still don't know if I believe like she, I don't know, maybe she didn't actually jump off the cliff and 
she was just I don't know <laughs> like, what were her intentions was she jumping off the cliff to end the suffering or was she jumping off the cliff to float like that's the part that I'm kind of hung up on yeah, because it didn't seem it didn't seem throughout the book like she she was wanting to to die or anything. So I don't think I don't think she stepped off the cliff with the intention to end her life. Yeah. Um but I also don't know why she would step off of a high cliff right. thinking that she would float. Um I mean, but then also there's that one scene where she, you know, pokes a hole through the glass and it doesn't shatter. It like, yeah, like stretches kind of or opens up like a, yeah. and so I was like, what is happening right now? So maybe, I mean, obviously maybe. like her eyesight could have been messed up too. Like we don't yeah. know and we'll never know. It's just, we come up with our own theory yeah. of what we think happened, but I mean, I don't know if all of this stuff was happening to me and people were around me just I felt like they were out to get me then maybe I would too not to float but like just to end the suffering because yeah. I mean she's old anyways and I don't know going through that for that long and not realizing it's that long you start to you're questioning everything maybe yeah. Yeah, and she was also talking with that, what was his name? Um, I can't remember his name. The the guy that she was talking to in there, the mathematician guy. I can't remember his name. It starts with an H. <laughs> yeah, I can't remember his name. Um, but he was always talking about, like, besides all of the, the number stuff, they did have a conversation at one point where – um he's talking about a life a density a burden to remain upright mm -hmm. um about how like the energy of the universe and like they're getting into this big like philosophical conversation and then like Shelly cuts them off but um I feel like that could be like could have been influencing her mind too thinking that you know she would be able to like do something with gravity or <laughs> something. I mean, and then we never got like an explanation on the, remember when she, which I thought was weird that she was like, take off your shirt, Hilbert. Like, I was, I was like, where is this going? I do not want to experience old people sex right now. In this yeah, I was like, wait, wait a second. <laughs> but when they were talking about like the human body and stuff like that, um, an old man's imperfect torso, years on display in that sagging skin, quiet moments of pride and shame, excitement and fear, joy, guilt, desire, happiness, loss, love. I can see it, all of it and more, just like my own. And I was like, you're right, because you hold all of your experiences. And he was, like, shy about taking off his shirt because he's like, you don't want to see this. <laughs> like, you don't want to see an old man. And she's like, no, it's you. Yeah. And then she sees like the freaking growth on his neck and she starts yeah. out. But we never got an explanation about that. And I mean, it gets no. worse. No, I mean, there is that thing that happens with her later on in the book where she thinks she sees them going up her arm and on her chest. And then she wakes up the next day and has nothing. Yeah. Um, but it seemed like in that moment, I don't know. It seemed like it was real, but maybe they weren't there. And then there was that, that Jack guy. He was just like, you know, paint it, paint it if you see it or whatever. I don't yes, understand. That why. gave me chills. I actually have that part when he was like, I want you to paint marks on me. If that's what you see, paint what you see. Yeah. And I could just like hear him saying that. Cause it was like, he whispers into her ear yeah. and I'm like, I could feel him whispering it into my ear. And I'm like, so are you trying to validate like what she's seeing or are you just trying to make her feel better about like not being able to de decipher like what's real and what's not? Yeah. Cause in that moment I was like, Oh, they're trying to like hide something. And he's like trying to tell her, you know, you you're the one who sees it. Everyone else is hiding it. So paint what you see so that it can actually be seen. But 
I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. Um, what do you think? Do you think that it was all in her mind or do you think there was something weird going on in the facility or a mixture of the two or what do you think? So the only thing that leads me to believe that it's just all made up, like, I want to believe that, you know, it was just her not remembering correctly and her losing her mind. But then there are some moments where I was like, that's a little weird. Like when she, the, what's her name? Shelly. She cuts her nail and then she bleeds and she's like talking about how good her blood is. She was like, how can you tell like how good my blood is just by looking at it? And I was like, that's a little weird. And then right. her seeing Hilbert in that room, like under the covers. And then she trips on the bag of like freaking nail clippings <laughs> and hair, like just very weird. But mm -hmm. at the same time, we cannot trust her. Exactly. So I don't know if she just made that up or not. Yeah. So that's you know, maybe like, it's yeah. just so weird. Yeah. It, it's really hard to say because you don't know if, you know, was that like, you know, a, a really actual bag of clippings or was there just some clippings on the floor or was yeah. it something else that she was seeing and she just thought it looked like a bag of clippings or, you know. And like Shelly, did she actually say that to her? Yeah. I don't know. Yeah. Yeah, how is she remembering it? Um, it's, it's so hard. How say. did you take that scene where she walked in on Jack, like, sipping wine and crying? Like, do you think... See, my, my thought was when he started to act weird and kind of feel like, to me, it felt like he was kind of breaking down about certain things. And obviously we don't get his perspective of anything. So I don't know what's happening in his real life, you know, or in his life outside of this place um, or his relationship with other people and his family or whatever. And I think he talks a little bit about some stuff, but um, I felt like he was having like a crisis or something about possibly what they were doing behind the scenes and um and like that's why he was crying like he was just upset about the whole situation and also for himself being like stuck there um and not able to leave and then also everyone else is stuck there and not able to leave and whether that's suspicious or not I mean if he's really honestly feeling stuck there is it because he's being kind of like held hostage there or is it because he just doesn't have any other options and he has to work there um but I don't know it, it felt like a weird a weird situation mm -hmm. and something that could have been potentially suspicious I, I didn't really know what to make of it what about you I don't know because I felt like he was the only one trying to, because the whole time we think Shelly's like the bad guy, mm -hmm. like Shelly's doing all these shady things yeah. and he, he Jack is going along with it. Yeah, he definitely felt in like certain points like he was trying to help her. Um, yeah. He was trying to let her express like who she was and he, he told her that he liked how, um, you know, talkative she was about certain things and how she talked about certain things when Shelly would shut her down and be like, I don't want you guys to talk about this. Um, yeah. You know, she had her reasonings for it, but um, Jack definitely encouraged her a little bit more, but I'm, I don't know. I don't know. But it was shady when he would be like, Oh, we'll talk about it later. Like if Shelly would come in. So I'm like, what are you trying to reveal to her or are you just trying to placate her yeah into thinking that maybe something is going on because you know like what they say when they're like oh my gosh um somebody who has dementia if they say like oh hello and they call you by a different name you just go along with it because it's mm -hmm. easier than like no you're wrong mm -hmm. and like upsetting them so mm -hmm. I maybe think that's more of what he was doing. Maybe. Like the more I think about it. Uh huh. I could see that. He seemed like, I, I definitely didn't get any like bad guy vibes from him. So I feel like whatever he was trying to do, he was doing it with like good intentions maybe. 
Um, although I'm, I'm really confused as to why he would let her out of the grounds. Like even, even knowing like how much she wanted to go outside. I mean, it, it says in the beginning of the book, I had forgot, but when I was going through it today, like it says in the beginning of the book, she asks Shelly and Shelly's like, there it's dangerous out there. There's, mm -hmm. we don't let anybody walk outside by themselves because the terrain is dangerous. And obviously he should know that as the person who works there, why would he give her the code and let her go out there by herself, knowing that she could potentially hurt herself? That just seems crazy to me, mm. especially if he cares about her in any way. Yeah. I feel like maybe this might be a little, <laughs> a little weird and you're going to have to stick with me here for a second, but <laughs> maybe like the actual book itself is out of order too. Because huh. I'm thinking of, like, I don't think she was dead the entire time, but I think maybe him crying and, like, all that kind of stuff, she had died. Because we get the her huh. eu eulogy in, like, this weird spot. And they're like, mm -hmm. no, that was already pre-prepared, pre like, when your husband yeah. was still alive. And I was like, why would you just have that sitting out? Yeah. If she's al So I, I was thinking too. she was dead then, but I'm thinking maybe he mm. was feeling guilty about letting her out, like, before. And that's when she died. But, like, everything's out of order, if that makes sense. Like, she jumped off the cliff and then he saw him crying with the, with the wine because he felt guilty about being the one to let her out. Huh. Possibly. That's so interesting. The things that are happening in the book aren't happening, like... What is it called? <laughs> in like the, the linear timeline. Yeah, 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 in the same like sequence. Yeah, I'm gonna. Oh, man, I I need to reread this right now, <laughs> and like just to like look at it from different angles. That's something I love about his books, and I feel like you could do that with any of the ones that he's written so far. Is you could reread them like over and over and look at them from different angles and get something different. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I'm going to try and catch up on some of these comments because I feel like I've been talking for a while. Okay. Um, honestly, I don't know. I feel like I read it so quickly that I wasn't emotionally impacted like everyone else. So I think reading physically would have helped me slow down, possibly. I mean, it is a fast moving book. It doesn't take long to get through. Um, and I feel like I read it at a pretty fast speed for me. I normally read it to speed um maybe 2.5 depending on the narrator and for this one I think I read it at three um just because there's like a lot of pauses and stuff it, it's read quite slow um but yeah maybe I mean I didn't feel I don't feel like I was particularly emotional throughout the book I was more just kind of in that constant state of back and forth of um, like, is it her perspective or are we dealing with something more sinister from these people that she's around or, you know, that kind of back and forth. Um, also, Sarah, <laughs> she's always expecting to cry. You know me so well. <laughs> um, I feel like I need to reread this one. Yeah. I'm definitely going to reread it. I mean, I was planning to anyways. Yeah. Because... I want to follow the same pattern that I did with I'm thinking of ending things, reading it physically and then going back. And obviously if they're written this way, like I'm going to do that with faux also, I think just, I want to be able to experience it again and try to like, see what I think the second time around. Yeah. I love when books have that, that factor to them. Cause it, mm -hmm. it, I like to reread. I'm someone who likes to reread. Um, but like not all books, I feel like have that quality to them where you actually want to reread them again. Like some are just one and done. Yeah. Um, I actually saw the ending as Penny taking back control. She's been feeling that her life had been taken over and the conclusion represented her setting herself free. I did love that ending for her. I mean, you know, there's a multitude of ways that people can die, um, you know, jumping off a cliff, if that's indeed how she died, you know, maybe that's not 
know. Yeah, we don't know what's real. <laughs> but the fact that she was able to experience something that there's bugs flying around my face. The <laughs> fact that she was able to experience something that she had been wanting to do since she was a child. Um, whether she actually floated or not kind of doesn't matter. She felt like she was um, right before she hit the ground, possibly. Yeah. Um, so that was kind of, to me, that was very, I love that for her, that she was able to experience that before she died. Yeah, and there was one part, maybe it was her and Hilbert. I feel like she mostly had interactions with Hilbert out of anyone. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. But they were talking about, like the good I'm just paraphrasing here but like the good parts of every day is that it ends like yeah that things have an ending Mm -hmm. so her being able to write her own ending is like a really beautiful thing yeah Um, I think her mind was going, she was aging, and if she had the faculties to decide she was ready and wanted to float, then good for her. Yeah. I still don't know why he would, as like a caregiver, allow her to go wander out there, but um, I feel like it was, maybe he thought it was fair to her to let her, you know, have her time outside or I don't well, know. maybe she just got out I mean I don't know maybe he didn't even let her out he just wasn't maybe. watching yeah maybe because that was her perspective so just her saying that like he gave her this code maybe he didn't actually and yeah. she just got out um I love it when a book leaves it up to you to speculate what happens me too mm-hmm. Same page. Um, I had a hope for a part of the book that as Shelley was a scientist, that she was going to magically help them live a long time. Then when it took a turn, I think she had dementia and died. Yeah, I was kind of speculating throughout the book. Like on one side, I thought that, you know, it was just her mind going. But then on the other side, I, I, I thought that maybe Shelley was either trying to prolong her own life by doing something with this like small group of people since she said that she was a scientist and that scientists observe typically but she's more into like theories and stuff like that Um, but like having this small group of people to work with to be able to have like this kind of controlled atmosphere away from outsiders and to have all of these people who are very old and experiencing memory loss and stuff like that already like it would be kind of like the perfect setup for a scientist who is trying to do things to elongate life or um whether that be theirs or hers and then there was all this talk within the book about um like Hilbert would say things about um like them all being one or making them all like into the categorizing them as all one being or like when she was getting her hair cut or getting her makeup or nails done or whatever Shelly would say like well Ruth likes this and like make her look like Ruth was that was that for because she was trying to like make them all one or like one would start to look sickly and the other one would start to look more healthy and like I was just like, is she like playing with their with their life force and like trying to create something as a scientist? Obviously that didn't go anywhere, but Yeah. I mean, I kind of felt the same way too, because there was a lot of like talk about fractions and stuff too. I mean, obviously mm-hmm. Hilbert is really into math, but there was a time where I thought maybe it was just her and they weren't even there. They were just like different facets of like different Uh personalities of hers because like Mm -hmm. the one thing we get from each character so the guy who doesn't talk I don't even remember his name Pete yeah I think so he like is really into music he plays the The violin yeah and then we have Hilbert who's really into math and then um Ruth is just like fluent in a bunch of languages but I mean we didn't really know a lot about Penny's backstory except for the fact that like she's an artist 
Mm -hmm. So I was like, maybe she played the violin, like maybe she played that instrument when she was younger Mm -hmm. and like maybe her favorite subject was math. And I was thinking that maybe it was just her the entire time. And I don't know, because they were just talking about that a lot. And then they were saying they actually name dropped like we spread in Latin. And I was like, (laughs) that is so on the nose. (laughs) that's why I was like, what does this mean? This cover's got to mean something. There's got to be something going on with like, I don't know. They're, they're spreading. They're trying to spread something. What are they trying to do? Um, That's the comment about us saying, why are you taking off your shirts? Oh, (laughs) I don't know. Maybe I just read too much smut, but like someone, <laughs> yeah. someone was about to get I was like, wait <laughs> a second. I was like, like no, 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 don't let it go there. <laughs> um, Shelly was an extraterrestrial psychic vampire siphoning off the residents' life forces. Hey, it's possible. Okay, it's Ian Reed and it's the horror novel. Maybe anything. <laughs> I wouldn't possible. have been surprised. I was waiting for things to get weird. Um the scene when the other lady was in her room was a little weird. Oh, where she was crouching? That freaked um, me yeah. out. I was like, yeah, that's horrific right there. Do you think um, prior to her going, when she's experiencing things in her apartment, like the person standing outside of her house and the technician that comes into her apartment and is like messing with her messing with her outlets and stuff like that. Do you think, I don't know, do you think she had a reason to be suspicious for any of that stuff? I mean, we're from her perspective, but, or do you think that was just kind of showing her mental state? I think that was showing her mental state. Yeah. I mean, cause like, I feel like people are watching me sometimes, but I can't imagine being in my nineties and then also just feeling like I'm slowly losing reality so yeah. I would just convince myself there is yeah. a figure looking at me. Like, I can see it. I feel like that would be so scary to be in your 90s living alone and not really having anyone to call or anything when things are going wrong other than your landlord. But, like, she mm-hmm. never seemed to want to – she was seemed like she was very independent and didn't want to ask for help. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I feel like that would be super scary. And then like some random people showing up at your house, wanting to mess with your stuff. And now then her taping over all the outlets <laughs> after he left. I was yeah. Like, like she does something crazy. I'm like, Oh, um, the book being out of order could be representative of Penny's jumbled up mind. Yeah. yeah. I didn't even think of it that way. I think that's really interesting. Sarah. I didn't even think about <laughs> the fact that it could be out of order. And the thing is, I have, like, I could be wrong, but there's no one to say, like, it's... Yeah, there's no one to say you are you're wrong. I just think that, I think that's really interesting, and I, I want to reread it and, like, think about it being in a different order and see if that makes any more sense or something. Yeah. I don't know if I... I did hear on Gabby's vlog her say something about... Um, and, and you said about her actually dying when she falls off the the chair and hits her head I don't know if I if I like that so I'm gonna say no (laughs) um I kind of like the idea of her her being found and her actually going to this facility um but she does say at certain points in the book how she's lucky to have survived and stuff like that so maybe maybe it was all it was all nothing the one thing though that really makes me think it could be that way though there was a lot of red when she first arrives to it's called hmm. six seaters, right? Cause there's six seaters. Yeah. She yeah. arrives there and Shelly's wearing a red dress, red lipstick. And then her room has a red door. And I was like looking up what the symbolism of red was and it's life, health, vigor, courage, love, and religious fervor. So I'm <laughs> like, because it was just weird that all three red things happened like right then and there. So I was thinking maybe that the theory of her dying when she fell off the chair or whatever, like 
yeah and that was just her welcoming into wherever Maybe. she's meant to go to next I didn't even think about that, like all the bread and all that kind of stuff. I didn't even think about that. There's so many directions this book could go. Mm -hmm. I love that. I love that. Um, she midsummered. <laughs> um, did anyone else think about the name Shelley as in reference to Mary Shelley, author of Frankenstein? I didn't, but that's interesting too, because she is a scientist and stuff like that. I don't know. It didn't seem like throughout the book she was really creating things, but I, I did feel like she was doing something with the nails and the hair and the blood and all of that. But um, yeah, that is kind of interesting though. Like if yeah. she were creating this monster, or there was one part where they were saying she's trying to make it so we'll live forever. Yeah. And well, anytime. Anytime um, anyone would say, like, um, would say how, like, you know, the fact that we don't live forever, the fact that there is a time limit, you know, is what's important. It makes us, it may give us anxiety, but it makes us appreciate what we have. And she would be like, no, I don't agree with that. Like, the longevity like even if you live for longer than that even if you have more time more time is always better than there being like a time limit um which made me feel like she was trying to increase either their longevity or her own longevity or mm -hmm. something throughout the book but again that doesn't really play out um yeah i didn't even think of that and it's spelled that way, too. It's spelled that same way. Yeah. Um, in Frankenstein, there's a scientist who wants to create, reanimate life from what is inanimate. Um, I mean, it yeah. definitely could be a nod to Mary Shelley, for sure. For sure. For sure. Um, okay, so that's it for the comments. Um, I feel like I feel like we talked about everything. <laughs> um <laughs> Do, do you have anything else that you want to talk about in the, that happened? In um, the or? I can't even remember like the full scene, but the part where she like rips her face and it's Ruth's face under her. Mm -hmm. What was that about? I don't, um, I, I, I don't, I don't think that happened. <laughs> um, but I, again, there was that talk throughout the book about, um, you know, them being of one person and how she sees them all like linked together and how uh, Shelly would like cut her hair in the same hairstyle as Ruth's and give her the same lipstick color or say Ruth likes this. So I'm going to give this to you too, because you should like it too. It kind of felt like, <sighs> shoot, hold on a second. <laughs> My dog, like, someone just came in and left. Um, it felt like she kind of was treating them all the same or having them, putting them all in, like, a bubble of they should all kind of like the same things or feel the same way mm -hmm. or something like that. So I think maybe she was feeling like she wasn't allowed, not allowed to be herself, but maybe she was starting to lose herself in some ways in how Shelly was trying to kind of put some of Ruth's likes onto her. Right. Um, like she couldn't so, be her own person. Yeah. So in her mind, she just came up with something where she became Ruth or was Ruth in some way. That's the way I, I took it. Mm -hmm. What about you? Yeah, definitely. And I think it was there like that to add to the whole like horror of it all. Yeah, yeah. There wasn't since there wasn't a lot of like like horror horror stuff in it, but mm -hmm. but again, it's like the dread that occurs like while you're reading it because the more and more you think of it, you're like, that would be really horrific if that was me experiencing all of these things. And not knowing if I'm yeah. really seeing what I'm seeing or yeah. if everyone's out to get me or not. Mm -hmm. And then seeing 
your own eulogy like written out that would just be yeah. so weird that would be terrifying I would be so freaked out and like if it was all in her mind like that would just be like such a, a breaking point to like see your own eulogy like I would be like, am I dead? Like, mm -hmm. have, like, am I real? It, what, what's happening? Like, that would be terrifying. Yeah. Um, I also thought the whole symbiosis thing, the residents were kind of portrayed as being different parts of the same organisms. They were there for each other, literally. Yeah. Um, they definitely relied on each other for a lot of different things. And, you know, at that age, they kind of needed to, cause she wasn't doing well on her own. Um, so yeah, that definitely could have symbolized them taking care of one another or something like that. Were they real though? Yeah. Oh, well, <laughs> that's true. Were they real? <laughs> Was she dead the whole time? Is it all in her mind? Who knows? <laughs> all right. Um, Anything else? No, I think that's it. <laughs> I mean, we could probably go on for days. I know. Going, 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 going. I think this is the longest uh, discussion I've ever had, going <laughs> close to an hour and a half. This is the longest one I've ever had. Um, there's a lot to pick apart with this one, and there's so many possibilities of, like, and interpretations of things. It's just so fascinating. I really, really loved it. Um, but yeah, thank you all for joining. If you have anything else you want to say, real quick to it before we leave. Um, thank you, Sarah, for joining me. This was such a fun discussion. I really liked Thanks for having me. Yeah, you're more than welcome. Um, okay, so thank you guys so much. And uh, I'll see you next. Oh, before I go, um, December is going to be an off month for the book club. So there's not going to be a book for December. Um, for November's book is Egregore by Spencer Weedman. Let me grab it. This is November's book. Um, Lexi from Books with Lexi is going to be uh, joining me for the discussion for this one. Um, I don't know if it's going to be at the end of this month or into December. Um, but yeah, this is going to be the last book that we read for the year. And then we'll pick up again in January. And I'll have a video out in December talking about what uh, January's pick is going to be. Okay. Uh, yeah, it was a great book. I'm glad the majority of people here liked it. <laughs> mm -hmm. I mean, there were um, no bad ratings. Like the lowest yeah, was a three. No one hated so. it. No one was like, who sucked? <laughs> um, which is great. I love that. I mean, I can understand why this wouldn't work for everyone. Um, it being so character driven and it being, you know, very open to interpretation mm -hmm. and stuff. I know a lot of people don't like that. Um, but I... I really enjoyed it. I'm glad you did too. <laughs> All right. Um, thanks again for coming. Bye, everyone. Bye. Bye. Let me figure out how to stop this thing. <laughs> uh, oh, here we go. <laughs>